Thanks, Jerry. Thanks to Vertical Events for the opportunity to present, and um, thanks for everyone for hanging around, um, getting close to beer o'clock. So, yeah, at Blackstone, we're looking to produce a green nickel downstream product for the lithium ion battery industry. And um, we're, we're looking to expand our capacity in that downstream and, and really excited to, to today uncover what we think could be a, a globally significant um, downstream refinery strategy. Um, so it's the Takwa nickel sulphide project, but it's now becoming the Takwa um, nickel downstream refinery in northern Vietnam. We've got an experienced board and management team. We've got a track record over 20 years of executing over on projects all across the globe. Strong macro tailwinds. This, this is probably the biggest opportunity we've seen in, in, in a lifetime, um, what we're seeing in this electric vehicle revolution. And um, we can vouch for the demand that's coming and, and we, we have regular communications with the, the battery end users and, and yeah, there's a scramble coming for this metal and, and we're pretty excited to, to potentially sh show them what could be a, an, an opportunity that they can't resist. So we've got a, a unique business model that's significantly different to all of our peers in the nickel sulphide space. It's a scalable and modular approach. So this is, a, this is an industrial play, basically, where we can scale this up to as big as that demand that's coming. So there's a significant demand coming from these battery end users, and, and this, this plant design can be scaled up to, to suit that demand. Um, we've got some of the lowest labour costs we've ever seen anywhere in the world, and, and a very competitive um, power cost. So this is a, a renewable power in the Son La province, so we have the hydro, largest hydro power plant in Southeast Asia on our doorstep, and that's why we believe we will have some of the, the biggest margins in the game, and because of that low operating cost environment, but the, the products will have a premium at attached to them because they're a green nickel product. And we also have a district scale nickel sulphide opportunity, so we'll talk a little bit about drilling as, because it is an exploration conference. Um, so this is the board management team. We've just added a uh, investment banking expert, Peter Pukides, um, 20 years of investment banking through Asia, so has done some, some major deals through um, Asia, has done a lot of work in, in South Korea. Um, Mr Jung is the representative of EcoPro. They're the largest cathode manufacturer in uh, South Korea, and so they're a, a major part of, of our strategy going forward. Um, Hamish Halliday and Andrew, uh, geological experts, and myself, yeah, background in mining engineering and, and capital markets. So we've got a good blend of, of technical and financial expertise there. And this is where it gets uh, even more exciting. We've brought in some, some mine builders. So um, Andrew Strickland, head of project development, I've just grabbed from um, GR Engineering. I've worked with Andrew before, a great chemical engineer. We've also brought in Richard Kitchener who spent 10 years uh, in mine, and mine, mine management in Vietnam. So we've got technical experts ready to, to build this opportunity. Um, so this is all about this movement towards high nickel cathode. So we, we started our relationship with EcoPro over two years ago. We started looking at cobalt and they said, can you move the, towards nickel sulphide? And so there's this movement towards a high nickel uh, cathode. So it's an NCM nickel cobalt manganese ratio of 811. So there's eight times more nickel in the um, modern lithium ion battery than there is cobalt, and that began as a 111 ratio. And this is, this is what, what I see is probably the biggest um, opportunity I've seen in a lifetime. So the, this flow of capital that we're seeing coming from these gigafactories. So LG have said they want to spend $10 billion in Indonesia. We, we provide an opportunity to, to do a similar thing, but in, in a much better jurisdiction in Vietnam, but through a different process, and that's through a green nickel process through the sulphide uh, opportunity. So there's a, a flow of capital coming. Um, Friedland, I, I quote, recently said, if you, you, if, if you have a gigafactory, it's only a giga building if you can't have security of supply. So there's a major security of supply issue um, we, we're, we're talking regularly with these major players, LG and Samsung and, and Echo Pro, our p current partner. They, they don't know where they're getting the nickel from and, and we're going to provide them an opportunity that they, w w makes us a globally significant player. 
So just on, on our opportunity, so we have an existing mine and an existing concentrator. We need to we then take that concentrator and convert it into that NCM811. So you can see that's the NCM811 product that we're looking to pr produce. It's not as pretty as nickel sulphate, but I can say that it trades at a significant premium to nickel sulphate. So nickel sulphate trades at a premium to nickel metal. This product trades at a 35% premium to the nickel metal price. So that 811 um, precursor product trades a significant premium. So, um, and that's why we, we're, we're confident that we'll have some very strong margins because of that hydro grid power in Sonla and those low, low, low labour costs. LG and Samsung have, have indicated that they will build lithium-ion battery plants in Vietnam. Um, LG Chem's looking to build a $2 billion battery plant. A local conglomerate called Vinfast is looking to build electric vehicles and electric scooters. So this, we believe, is an emerging hub for the lithium-ion battery industry, and we're on the doorstep of the major players being South Korea, Japan and China. So this is the location, so we're six hours west of Hanoi. Um, some of the best infrastructure I've ever seen in an emerging market. So we've got the port of Haiphong, which is a, a globally significant port. There's a significant amount of manufacturing of electronics in this region. Uh, all sorts of, of manufacturing as, outside of electronics as well. We've got the Sonla Hydro power plant. So that's, that's Sonla Hydro. That's right next to the mine. The largest hydro power plant in Southeast Asia. And that's why we believe we will have the cleanest and greenest nickel in the world, and it's because of that hydro power and that renewable power. All of the existing mines throughout the globe are built on um, diesel and, and uh, coal-fired uh, electricity. So we're going to build on our, our initial scoping study numbers. The initial scoping study, we looked at the first ore body, we drilled that out, it's a very large disseminated ore body. Um, we're going to add in high-grade massive sulphide opportunities, and we'll talk more about those later. But we're also going to look at third-party concentrate. So we'll look to source concentrate from other providers through Australia and Canada and, and, and upgrade it through that NCM811 product. So you can see here, each of those um, trains, we're calling them, so these are, these are um, it's the scalable nature of this is, so each of those uh, refineries is, is one autoclave, it's a 200,000 tonne per annum autoclave, it's a pressure oxidation process, we'll talk more about the process, but this is a very scalable, um, we can, as long as we can access concentrate, we can, we can produce these NCM81 products. And that's the, we've done a recent deal with Trafigura whereby they, we purchased the concentrate from Trafigura and we upgrade it into these downstream chemical products. So each of those trains um, has the potential to produce in the order of 20,000 tonnes per annum of nickel. So um, our first scoping study was, was focused on one train that had an MPV of $1 billion. So each of those subsequent trains also is worth around $1 billion and significantly um, good, strong MPV to capex ratios. So this is the process, it's pressure oxidation autoclave. This is a tried and tested technology used all through the mining industry, particularly in the refractory gold space. Once it's gone into the solution, you, you, pro, you produce an intermediate product, which is the mixed hydroxide precipitate. This is a product that the industry is already scrambling for, so we actually have two products. The MHP is the intermediate, and then the NCM811 is the, is the final product. So the major players are all looking for this NCM product. Um, we're on the, on the doorstep of those major players. So we've got yeah, major, major conglomerates like LG and Samsung in country ready to, to look at these sorts of opportunities. But most importantly, we've got that cheap labour and the uh, low hydropower um, renewable energy costs. So the industry's sort of broken up between two types of nickel. You've got nickel sulphide and nickel laterite, and the nickel sulphide type is, is much lower energy intensity. So we want to be moving towards nickel sulphide. Those, those, the laterites are high capital intensity, so they, they are a cleaner um, process. So hydromet is a much cleaner process, as, as is the pressure oxidation. But we want to be moving away from coal and diesel powered um, mine sites and, and infrastructure and refineries. So we, we believe we've got the opportunity to produce a very clean green product and it's, it's driven by the hydrometallurgical process which is the pressure oxidation 
Um, this, this is a process that's optimised for the chemical industry, so we're not looking at, at nickel metal, this is straight to the chemical products. Um, and we've got that hydro renewable power. So it puts us in a very strong position on a global um, significant opportunity. So just on the exploration, so we've got the existing concentrator sits right there with the band Fook, um, and we've got a number of these massive sulphide opportunities. So this is like, I, I say it's like going into Cambelda 50 years ago, we've got nickel sulphide outcropping at surface, 25 outcropping massive sulphide opportunities and these all of those have not been tested by modern geophysics and and have not been drill tested so we have our two em crews we've bought our own em equipment we have our own um, geophysicists uh, local geophysicists walking through and and doing the down, downhole and um, ground based em and we just come through with the drill rigs we've got 10 drill rigs operating across four, five of those 25 targets and it's, yeah, it's like shooting fish in a barrel. We're, within metres of that EM plate, we hit massive salt fine. So these are all the targets. We're moving through those 25 targets. We're moving them into resources. So the first resource, Ban Fook, there's, around, there's up to 60 million tonnes at the first one. These other, other high grades are, are much smaller opportunities, but higher grade massive sulphide. So we have a number of high grade opportunities, but we also have a number of these large disseminated bulk tonnage opportunities as well. So this is Ban Fook, it's a kilometre long, half a kilometre wide. This is a very large um, disseminated ore body. It's around 0.5% nickel and that's um, very economic in, in the current uh, scoping study. Uh, the other, the Ban Kwa is one that's nearby that's a very similar. It's uh, the little sister, I suppose, of Ban Fook. So Ban Kwa looks like another large disseminated ore body. So Ban Kwa will we, we're currently drilling and that will add mine life. So the initial scoping study had eight and a half years. Um, Banqua, we believe, will add mine life. We also have the ability to use this existing infrastructure. Um, this concentrator will feed into that downstream refinery. Um, so we're looking at reducing the capex at the upstream mine level and, and we're looking at um, using the existing facility um, we haven't factored in the byproduct credits, so there's a significant amount of platinum, palladium, gold, rhodium, um, iridium. So there's there's a lot of credits there. We think there could be 20 to 30 percent extra value that wasn't in that scoping study. 